In Ephesians 5 and verse 18, it says, Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, spirit and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you look at the New Testament, especially beginning in the book of Acts and then through the epistles, you'll see that God's plan and purpose for New Testament believers is that they live a spirit-filled life. It's how the church began, and we're a part of that same church. Now, the term spirit-filled has become a title and is used too loosely, and it's lost its meaning in many circles. It's, you know, spirit-filled is not just a designation, not supposed to be, like Baptist or Methodist. <laughs> Or whatever. What, what, what group are y'all? Spirit field. <laughs> well, spiritual people can, can be around you about five minutes and tell whether you are or not. <laughs> and just because you said you are, that doesn't make you. And just because you put a label. And just because you spoke in tongues one time long ago. Doesn't mean you are filled with the Spirit today. Now, he didn't leave you. He's still there. But you have to yield to him. And you see the key to yielding in this word, speaking. Look at it again, verse 18. Be filled, excuse me, don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. There's not even a period there. Be filled with the Spirit, What? Speaking, you can't separate being filled with the Spirit from speaking. And, I, and you could say it like this, uh, if I could paraphrase, speaking by inspiration. This includes speaking in other tongues, and it includes prophecy. One is inspired utterance in a language you don't know. The other is inspired utterance in a language you do know. But when he says speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, he's not talking about something you read out of a book. He's talking about singing by inspiration. We have a collection of these in the book of Psalms. These are 150 examples of utterance that came in song that was not a part of somebody's recorded history or religious ritual. These, when they were sung by inspiration, had not been heard before. You could call them new songs, but they are psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So, people who don't believe this, then they try to, to alter the text, and they try to make supernatural things natural. They do that with this. They do that with all the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12. They do it with speaking with tongues. And, and people who don't believe in these things, which I'm talking about millions of church-going people now, they will take 1 Corinthians 12 and they turn gifts of healings into doctors and nurses. They turn uh, speaking with new tongues into either not cussing anymore or somebody who has an inclination to learn other languages. No. If one of them is supernatural, all of them are supernatural. Amen. Right? Amen. Working with, of miracles is obviously not not just natural and common. No. So then the one right beside it, gifts of healings, thank God for doctors and nurses. But that's not what he's talking about. 
And you don't have to take mine or some other preacher's explanation for it. Read the book of Acts and see what was happening. You'll find every one of these manifestations in the book of Acts. Actually, you'll find all of the manifestations of the Spirit in the gospel accounts as well, except for speaking with tongues. And you'll find them in the Old Testament, except for speaking with tongues. Speaking with other tongues is distinctive of the church age. And if you're a part of the church, you ought to be speaking with tongues. <laughs> now, I know not everybody believes it, and I hope you're not hur- wishing I would hurry and get off of this. <laughs> Maybe as soon as you start speaking in tongues, we will. <laughs> and please don't get mad at me. Don't get ups- I'm not trying to take away from any experiences you've had. I'm not trying to tell you that you don't know God. I'm telling you there's more. Yes. And this is the doorway yes. to the more. And this includes if you speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. There's more. You need to speak in tongues more and in different ways. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? The Bible describes different kinds of tongues. In fact, let's go to 1 Corinthians 12 right now. And I want to spend some time in these chapters this evening, I believe, as the Lord leads. We've already addressed some of the statements and things that people teach that tries to say that speaking with tongues is not for today or it's not for everyone. And I know some of this may have seemed a little bit academic to some of you, but it's necessary. And things need to be based not just on my or your opinion, but the solid scripture. Right? So I want to review just a little bit and then go further. For one thing, if speaking with tongues has been done away with and is not for everyone, it sure is a waste of good scripture space because we got it in chapter 12, we got it in chapter 13, and almost the entire chapter 14 is devoted to it. Now for something that was already about passed away when it was written. Or that only applied to a few people for a little short time. Sure does take up a lot of New Testament. (laughs) Think about that. Chapter 12, are you there? Yes, sir. (laughs) Do you know why I'm talking about this, friends? There are multitudes of good Christian people that do not believe in speaking with other tongues. And they've actually been taught against it. Are taught that it's passed away. Are taught that it's not for everyone. So who's right? I'll tell you who's right. (laughs) This is right. And some people think they have scripture uh, for their position, which is why we're going over it again. 1 Corinthians 12, 1, are you there? Now concerning spiritual, the word gifts is added, so it's the things of the Spirit. Concerning spiritual things, and you'll see he's talking about the things of the Holy Spirit. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now when the scripture talks about, starts off talking about you not being ignorant, (laughs) what, what do you know? And why is it necessary to talk so much about this? There is such gross ignorance. I'm talking about in the church. You expect some ignorance in the world about these things, but in the church concerning the things of the Spirit. He said, I don't want you to be ignorant. And then he, in in verse 4, he said, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, or the margin says ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it's the same God which works all in all. Now notice the recurring theme of diversities. We might say different kinds. There are different kinds of gifts, different kinds of ministries, 
different kinds of operations. But it's the same Holy Spirit. Same Jesus, same Lord, same God. Verse 7, the manifestation of the Spirit's given to every man to profit with all. Now, you can identify the work of the Holy Spirit by the results. When the Spirit of God is speaking, the result will be edification. This word you'll see used over and over again, especially in chapter 14. I mean, it's just almost every verse. Edification. Now, that's not a word we use so much in modern vernacular. It, it means basically building up. Building up. When the Spirit of God speaks, it's going to build you up. When the Spirit of God manifests, it's going to build you up. Working of miracles is going to build you up. Gifts of healings is going to build you up. Holy Spirit prophecy and tongues and interpretation, it's going to build you up. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, it's going to edify, strengthen, build you up. The same word is used uh, Greek-wise in building a building. You start at the foundation, and then you, you never start at the top. <laughs> you start at the foundation, then what do you do? You build on that. And especially a, a tower and a skyscraper, you just keep on building on. Is that right? You build the, the basement and the footings, you build the first floor, then you build the second floor on the first floor, then you build the third floor on the first and second floor, then you build the fourth floor. That's what he's talking about. And this is to happen inside believers, inside human beings. Now the devil and the world will tear you down, wear you down, tear you down. Hmm? I don't have to ask if you've ever come in after a long day dragging, <laughs> dealing with people that weren't, that had no faith. Dealing with situations that were obviously the enemies at work. It's all designed to wear you down and tear you down. The enemy's a killer. He's a thief, stealer, a destroyer. Everything he does, that's the effect of it. Wearing you down, tearing you down, stealing from you, destroying something, killing something. And by stark contrast, what the Holy Spirit does, it heals you. It builds you up. It enlightens you. It edifies you. And you can tell what's Him and what's not Him by the fruit. Hmm? You can. And that's what he's, 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 the Spirit of God's bringing out about Himself. In these chapters, whatever the Spirit of God does, it's going to result, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now go to the 14th chapter, if you would. Speaking with tongues is mentioned again in this 12th chapter towards the end. It's mentioned, the 13th chapter begins by talking about speaking in tongues, tongues of men and of angels. In chapter 14, he goes into detail, verse after verse after 40 verses. And the primary subject is edification. And the thing he's referring to, through half of it at least, is speaking in tongues. Are we to just tear this page out? I got four or five people that say no. <laughs> or if tongues have passed away, if it's not for us anymore, and, and, and if you weren't here, we went into detail. Some people will say, well, the Bible said tongues have ceased. And they quote 1 Corinthians 13, uh, 8. Whether there will be tongues, they shall cease. 
it also says whether there's knowledge, it'll vanish away. And whether there's prophecies, they will fail and cease. How can you pick one out and say it ceased? Well, has knowledge ceased? Has all the prophecies been fulfilled? Well, then why have tongues ceased? No, that's bad doctrine. Pulling one phrase out of its context. Come on, are y'all with me? And others have said, well, 1 Corinthians 12 says, uh, verse 29, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healings? And the obvious answer is no. Do all speak with tongues? The obvious answer is no. Do all interpret? The obvious answer is no. So people say, well, see there, right there. It says not everybody speaks in tongues. And then people misquote and pull out of context. So, well, Paul himself said, I'd rather speak five words in my own understanding than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. And one theologian wrote and said, uh, Paul had a very dim view of tongues. <laughs> That's being dishonest. I'm assuming you read the rest of that chapter. No, the answer to this is the very first verse we read, I would not have you ignorant concerning spiritual things. The Bible refers to different kinds of tongues. Everybody say it out loud. Different kinds of tongues. There's more than one kind of tongue. Now the kind of tongue where you address a public assembly and it is interpreted, not everybody's used that way. And that's what he was talking about. If you read the passage in 1 Corinthians 12, it's ministry gift. An apostle is a ministry gift. A prophet, a teacher is a ministry gift. He's not talking about gifts of the Spirit. He's talking about ministry gifts. And there is a ministry of speaking with tongues and interpretation. Like there's ministries of healing. And yet the Bible also said one of the signs that follows believers is that they'll speak in new tongues. We went through the book of Acts and we saw time after time where they spoke in tongues, spoke in tongues, spoke in tongues. And Paul said, I I would that you were all speaking in tongues. And he went on to say, I speak in tongues more than all of you. That don't sound like a dim view of tongues. There is gross ignorance on this subject in the church. And a whole lot of people, if they don't do it themselves, they're against it. Against it. You know, I, I spend time in Arkansas and Missouri <laughs> as well. So, <laughs> a lot of times if folks, if they haven't had the experience, if they don't do it, then they find reasons to oppose it. And that's pride. You need to admit you don't know everything. Right? And if you're reading in the Bible about this group spoke in tongues and this group spoke in tongues and this group spoke in tongues, you know the Corinthians spoke in tongues, you know the Ephesians spoke in tongues, got reason to believe the Philippians and the Colossians spoke in tongues. When did all that, when was all that done away with? And we know there's groups of people speaking in tongues today. Whether you agree with it or not, it's never stopped. This is for every believer. It's wonderful. It's not something to fight. It's like people, some of the very same arguments that people use against speaking in tongues, they use against healing. That was just the apostles could do that. And when the last apostle died, all that ceased. God could heal if he wants to, but it's not for everybody. Bad doctrine. I said bad doctrine. No, these things have been bought and paid for in redemption, and they belong to every believer who will receive it and yield. No, friend, I've got great compassion for people that have struggled in this area because I did personally for years. I went years as a believer who did not speak in tongues and even wanted to. But I struggled and did not because of my lack of understanding, my wrong teaching, my confusion. Now, for many more years, I'm a believer who does speak with tongues. And so if you don't speak in tongues, you can't talk about it. You don't know. I do. We do. Let us help you out. 
it's how many believers who talk in tongues in this place in Branson? I want to hear you. Would you say it's for everybody? Yes. It's for every. Be, do you agree? Yes. It's for every. Yes. But obviously, it's for now, and it's for everybody. Amen. Everybody. So don't believe if you heard other stuff, don't believe that. Believe the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. <laughs> First Corinthians 14, are you there? And let me say it one more time. Don't get mad at us. We're not trying to take anything away from you. Trying, trying to get you into more. Come on over. The water's fine. Amen. Come on in. Amen. <laughs> right. First Corinthians 14. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, there's a number of people who in their hearts, they know this is right and they know it's true. But they don't want to experience the persecution right. of being a tongue talker. And that's dangerous because you got light that you're acting like you don't have. That's not safe. Friend, they that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer some persecution. If you're really walking with God, there's going to be some folks that say negative things about you. I know it's not fun, but they will. There'll be people that'll mock you and make fun of you because of the way you pray, because of believing in prosperity, because of believing in healing, because of believing in tongues and the gifts of the Spirit. But it's all right here. Yes. Right? Yes. And you just got to make up your mind that it doesn't matter what other people say. I know Phyllis and I, when we made the decision to follow the Lord in these things decades ago, there were some of our friends and some of our family thought we had lost our mind. They actually told other people. They said, they are, they have gone off the deep end. Boy, they are, they are messed up. They got into all that tongue talking. Uh, and even worse than that, prosperity <laughs> error. <laughs> yeah, that just sounds awful, don't it? <laughs> Full of the spirit and power and miracles and more than enough money to pay all your bills. Yeah, that just sounds terrible, don't it? Y'all are just that health and wealth gospel bunch. Well, well, what gospel do you want? Huh? Disease and defeat and broke gospel. Well, honey, that ain't gospel. Gospel means good news. And being defeated and broke and sick ain't good news. These folks don't believe it themselves. They'll tell you adamantly. Well, God put this on me to teach me something. And they'll go, they'll tell you on Sunday, Monday morning, they're in the doctor's office trying to get rid of it. Yeah. Pay big money. That's being a hypocrite. Yeah. You ought to believe on Monday what you believe on Sunday. Is that right? And if you believe God put it on you, don't you dare try to get rid of it. It's confusion. It's deception. Same thing. They are all, they're just death on anybody that preached prosperity. But man, they're working as hard as they can, doing everything they can to make money. Well, don't be a hypocrite. Practice what you preach. <laughs> are we making friends or not? I don't know. <laughs> lies blind and lies bind. The truth lets you see and the truth makes you free. Amen. Sometimes the truth will spank you before it sets you free. And that's only because you're resisting because of a bunch of tradition of men and junk. It hurts you to let go of what grandma and them believed. But if you open your eyes, what did it ever do for them? It hurt them. It held them back. Now, do you want to pass that junk on to your kids and grandkids? <coughs> Somebody say, I love, the truth I love the truth more than I love anything, anything. Or, anybody. or anybody. Now, that's saying the same thing as saying I love Jesus, yeah. right? Because right. he is the Word and he is the truth. 
the light, the life, the way. 1 Corinthians 14, are you there? Yes, follow, verse 1, follow after love and desire spiritual gifts. Gifts is not there. Desire the things of the Spirit. It's not enough to just say, well, if the Lord wanted to do something, okay. We, we must hunger for these things. In fact, the Bible says to covet earnestly. The best gifts are manifestations. There needs to be a stirring in us, a hunger and a desire that's in us, not just for a few minutes during church service, but day and night, day in, day out, week in, week out hungry for the gifts of the Spirit. This is what your spirit's hungry for. This is what the church, even if we know it or not, this is what the church is hungry for. Why? Because the gifts of the Spirit in full operation, you know what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it feels like? The book of Acts. And the book of Acts is supposed to look like a mirror to us. We're part of the same church. And it all began with speaking in tongues. All the rest that followed, that's how it started. And it's still that way today. Follow after love, desire spirituals, but rather that you may prophesy. He that speaks in a tongue, un unknown is added, it is unknown to the speaker, but it's not unknown to everybody. He that speaks in a tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God, for no man understands him, howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Now they, this was just for a handful, a handful of people centuries ago, and it's all passed away. Why do we need instruction like this? For the modern church. He that speaks in a tongue. Speaks not unto men. But unto God. Now what we're going to begin to get into. Is why speak in tongues. The purpose. Of speaking in tongues. There are people that mock this. And if they weren't so ignorant. About it they'd be in trouble. People say things like. What does. Speaking all that gibberish good for. You don't know who you're mocking. The Bible warns very seriously about blaspheming the Holy Spirit, which is speaking derogatorily of him and attributing his works to the devil. That's specifically what blaspheming the Holy Spirit is, that you are saying what the Holy Spirit did is a work of the devil. That is serious stuff. So if you're not sure, be quiet. Yeah. Right? right? I don't know if that's God or not. Well, just be quiet then. Lest you attribute the Holy Spirit's holy works to the evil one. He that speaks in a tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Here's one of the purposes of speaking in other tongues. It gives you the ability to bypass other people, your own understanding, and your ignorance. Man, that ought to make you shout loud right there because you <laughs> say, I'm not ignorant. Sure you are. All of us are ignorant of some things. There's some things we don't know. In fact, there's a whole lot of things we don't know. So how do you pray about what you don't know? You cannot with your own understanding. Because if you could pray about it with your understanding, you'd know it. The, instead of saying mysteries, a number of translations say secrets. <coughs> Secrets. We are in the earth with the curse and evil spirits and people that are in the wrong fam spiritual family, rebellious. 
And in any kind of conflict, you need intelligence. Right? You need intelligence. Where to go? What, what is the enemy going to do? What do I need to do? What's coming up? And we, here is where we are woefully inadequate in ourselves. Hold your place here. Go to Romans 8. Y'all got time for this? I hope so. This is all I got on the agenda for tonight. <laughs> Romans 8. Talking about the Holy Spirit and praying in the Spirit. Verse uh, 26. Romans 8, 26. And let's look at this in Young's literal translation. I believe is what I wanted you to, to see. If we have that. In like manner... The Spirit does help our weaknesses. For what we may pray for as it behooves us, we have not known. But the Spirit Himself does make intercession for us with groanings unutterable. One Greek scholar said, not utterable in articulate speech. Now don't separate part of this from the other part. What did he start out talking about? What you don't know. Well, how are you going to pray about what you don't know? The Holy Spirit can enable you to pray in ways that are not utterable with your known language and your limited understanding. Verse 27. He who's searching the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because according to God, he does intercede for the saints. We're instructed in the New Testament, like in, in Ephesians 6, to pray with all prayer for all saints in the Spirit. When you think about it, praying in tongues is the only way you could possibly do that. Amen. How can you pray for all saints? Right. Huh? How can you pray all kinds of prayer? How can you pray about the future and, and what you don't know about? Praying in tongues, speaking in tongues. And remember, we, we need to continually renew our, our thinking, understanding. There are numerous different kinds of tongues. We... You want to know more about this? Yes. yes. Let's ask the Lord right now. Say it out loud. Father God, Father God we, ask you we ask you for more revelation, for more revelation and, more understanding and more understanding about different kinds of tongues. About different kinds of tongues. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right. Thank you, Lord. He said, would it be his will to answer that prayer? Yes. Did he start off by saying, I don't want you ignorant of this? Yes. Well, then we prayed according to his will. Uh, read this again, this last verse. Speaking with tongues is a supernatural, beyond natural ability to pray directly to your Father secrets that others don't know, that the devil doesn't know, that your own mind does not know. A supernatural ability to pray when you don't know what you should pray. <laughs> or even if you do know what to pray about, you don't know what to pray as you should. That was one of the things that frustrated me. I told you I struggled. There were years I wanted to be filled in speaking in tongues and I was not because of wrong thinking and wrong uh, teaching too. But uh, there would be times things would get on my heart. I knew God had a plan. This is before we we're in the ministry, before we went to Raymond and all that. Things would come up on my heart and mind, and I think, God, something's going on. What is it? What is it? And, and I'd get up in the middle of the night and I'd go out outside and, and even go out in the woods. We lived in the country and, and I'm praying, but how many times can you say, oh God, what? Oh God, what? 
What is it? Oh God, talk to me. Oh God, you, you, you just, you, we don't know what to pray for Amen. as we ought. And the Holy Spirit, oh, somebody say, thank God for the Holy Spirit. He helps our weaknesses. And the very big weakness that he speaks of is we don't know what to pray for as we are. What pride it is. What arrogance and ignorance it is to say, I don't need that. I can pray everything I need to with my understanding just fine. I don't need all that gibberish. What ignorance and arrogance. Honey child, you need, I need, we all need the Holy Spirit's help. Hmm? And praying in the Spirit, praying in the Holy Spirit does not mean just praying with more volume and greater intensity. It means the same thing it meant in the book of Acts and 1 Corinthians and Ephesians. Come on, are y'all with me? It means the same thing. It includes speaking with other languages. Languages we don't know. Languages of men and languages of angels. So you wouldn't be qualified to know what they should sound like. I was listening to a, on a was it some kind of history, National Geographic show the other day, and these people were speaking a language. I mean, currently, just a couple of years ago, it did not sound like a language to me. I, I, it, it sounded like, you know, a nonsensical, but they perfectly understood what each, each other was saying. We don't know. We're not qualified. Amen. Certainly, we don't know about angelic languages. But by faith and with the Spirit's help, you can pray what you know and then say, oh, Holy Spirit, help me to pray about this. Whatever needs to be said, whatever needs to be asked, whatever needs to be done, give me utterance. And then by faith, start speaking. And just keep on speaking until you get a sense of accomplishment and release. It's all by faith. Which is why it pleases God, makes him so happy. It's all by faith. What good does it do? If you don't know, you're not listening. Supernatural ability means, keep reading, he that uh, prophesies speaks unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. So there is a speaking to yourself and to God. And then there's a speaking to others, different kinds of utterance. He that speaks in a tongue does what? Am I reading New Testament scriptures? I don't know about you. Well, I, I think I do know about most of you. I am not comfortable tearing that chapter up. I am not comfortable. You know, in, in the airplane, if we have an instrument that fails, a lot of times we'll put something over it that says inoperative. In other words, don't look at that. <laughs> don't try to trust that because it doesn't work. I'm not, I'm not comfortable putting a sticker over the top of this chapter uh -huh. huh? and go, do not read. Does not apply. It's in the middle. Of the New Testament. Yeah. How am I going to say, oh, I love chapter 13. That's a great love chapter. I love chapter 13. And verse chapter 15, that's a great resurrection chapter. I love chapter 15. Chapter 14, no, nah, that's not for us. No, it's all passed away. They were having some problems in the early days of the church. And he knew. If that's all it was, it's not inspired by the Holy Spirit, and it's not for all generations for all time, and it shouldn't be in here. But it is. I said it is. And if it's in here, and if it's inspired by the Holy Spirit, it is for everybody, every generation, every member in the church. 
And if you need to hear about speaking with tongues, then speaking with tongues should be a part of your life. Yeah. Elsewise, it's pointless. Keep reading. He that speaks in a tongue does what? What, what good is speaking in tongues? The Lord, I gave you one reason. Everybody with me? You got that first reason? Right. Supernatural means. Praying secrets. Talking secrets with your Father. Praying beyond your limited understanding. Secondly, he that speaks in a tongue does what? Edify. Edify, that means builds up himself. Do just a few people need building up in the church? Just a few believers? Speaking in tongues is a supernatural means of building yourself up on the inside. Who needs that? Everybody needs that. Jude 20 talks about this. Put that on the screen for us if you would. We'll come right back. Just stay where you are. But Jude, just one chapter you know. Verse 20, Jude I'm talking about. What does it say? But you, beloved, do what? Building up who? This is for you. Building up yourselves on, that didn't say it gives you faith. It builds you up on your most holy faith. How, how does it work? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Now people have tried to take that and make it mean something else. But why wouldn't it mean the same thing they're talking about in 1 Corinthians 14? And in these other places. He's talking about speaking in tongues. Praying in the Spirit. Speaking in the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14 defines speaking in the Spirit as speaking in tongues. So, a, number two, why I speak in tongues? It's a supernatural means of building yourself up. Amen. Oh, friend, if we'd only do this more. You feel weak? You feel draggy? You feel confused? What do you do? Get your mouth in gear. Make your tongue do its duty. And you're not just doing this mechanically, you're doing it in faith. Building yourselves up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. You're not doing it mindlessly. You are believing the Holy Spirit's giving you utterance. You are believing He's helping you to speak words of life. Words of light and direction. And as you keep releasing that faith, you'll begin to sense Hallelujah. One thing upon another, upon another, upon another. Hallelujah. Begins to build inside you strength, yes. life, light, edification. You may think we've digressed. We're talking about being filled with the Spirit. How'd you get filled with the Spirit? You start getting built up, built up, built up, built up until you are full. You're built up strong. You're built up high. You're filled, not partially, but full. Filled with the Spirit. What's the next word? Filled with the Spirit. Speaking. Speaking to yourselves. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks. I can see a church full in Branson. I can see a church full in Sarasota. I can see a bunch of believers that join us on a regular basis online that go through the week speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, building up their selves, praying out divine secrets and mysteries. And I can see the very atmosphere just being charged before the first song is ever sung. And I can see the other manifestations of the Holy Spirit, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, gifts of healings, working of miracles. Come on, are y'all with me? Why? Because they're the same, different manifestations, but the same Holy Spirit. And not just happening in the service. 
I'm talking about happening at your house, happening in your car, on your workplace. You got stirred up last night and prayed in tongues for four hours and you didn't know why, but man, you felt good when you got through and you got to work the next day and a coworker or a friend had a horrible thing happen to him and the moment it did, you knew what to say. You knew what to do. Oh, come on, you knew it. You knew it and you prayed it and you did it and a miracle happened for you. How did you know? Word of knowledge. How'd you know what to do? Direction and word of wisdom. How'd you know what was wrong? It could be any number of these things, but can you see one is connected to the other? You take away the praying in the spirit, you're not going to see these kind of things. They'll be rare if you do. One is connected to the other. My father in the faith, Brother Kenneth Hagin, said this numerous times. We've told you earlier in this series. He said, I, in my own life I have found the more I pray in tongues and praise and worship God in tongues, the more of the other gifts of the Spirit I have. The less I pray and speak in tongues, the less of the other gifts I have. If that's true, what should we do? If we're serious about wanting to see more and have more of God's manifestations, We'll get our mouth in gear. Is that right? We'll make our tongue do its duty. And it's not like it's such a hard, terrible thing to do. Because while you're doing it, you're getting built up. You're building up yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep reading. Verse 5. I know that only a few of you will speak in tongues. Huh? I know this is only for a short time. And a few very, sp- what? I would that you all, now what does that mean? I would that you all spoke with tongues. Why would you say that if it's not for everybody? I want you all, one translation says, I want all of you. To speak with tongues. But rather that you prophesy. Now here's where a lot of folks go, go off a, a wrong track. They go, no, no, now see, prophecy is preaching. <laughs> wrong, <laughs> wrong. <laughs> and preaching is what's important. No, honey, prophecy is not preaching. Amen. No. <laughs> but rather that you prophesy. Now, You've got to get the context. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaks with tongues. And you get some other people saying, well, see there, I'm just going to skip tongues. <laughs> because prophecy is greater and more important anyway. So I'm just going straight to the big thing, which is really preaching. Wrong, 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 wrong. No. He that prophesies than he that speaks with tongues, except... He interpret why that the church may receive edifying. He keeps saying throughout this passage, he's talking about what's happening in the church, in the assembly, in the services. Keep on, you'll see this. Brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I speak to you by revelation, knowledge, or prophesying, or by doctrine? Even things without life giving sound, pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what's piped or harped? If the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who will prepare himself to the battle? Keep going. So likewise, except you utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For you shall speak into the air. Now, we must remember how the church began. On the day of Pentecost, these people have been born again because Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. They have believed he's been raised from the dead. The criteria is met. Even giving them the great commission, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And yet he says, but before you go, wait in Jerusalem till you be endued with power, not born again, endued with power from on high. 
Right? Yes, sir. So when that happened, there was sign tongues. They spoke in tongues and I don't know how many different groups. It tells you, I don't know, a dozen or so different languages that the people heard them speaking in and knew they didn't know them. It was a sign. It was tongues without any interpretation. The speaker didn't understand what they were saying, but other people did. That's what the church came in on. So they're big on tongues. Right? You, you, can, you can be sure. For many years to come, Everybody knew about the day of Pentecost. Everybody knew about all the tongues and people had gotten filled themselves. And so when the Corinthians had church, they're trying to reproduce sign tongues. Speaking in tongues and expecting people to understand it. And you've got multiple folks doing this at the same time. And it was confusion, and it was bizarre. Somebody say different kinds of tongues. And so, he's telling them, no, in the church. Somebody say, in the church. In the church, everything needs to be done in a way that everybody is benefited. And he's telling them, well, yeah, when you're speaking in tongues, it's benefiting you. And that's fine. I'm, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit if you'll allow me. That's great. You're at home by yourself. You're out plowing in the field. You're fishing. But in the service, in the church, people need to understand what they're hearing. If they don't understand it, it's not going to benefit them. Keep going. Likewise, you, except you utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what's spoken? For you'll speak into the air. There, there are, it may be so many kinds of voices in the world. None of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I'll be unto him that speaks a barbarian. Actually, the, uh, maybe a better word there is foreigner. And he that speaks shall be a foreigner to me. Even so, you, for as much as you are zealous of spiritual things, seek that you may excel to what? The edifying of the church. Now, friend, this, this has a, to do with a whole lot more than speaking with tongues. It's just as true about how big a hat you wear in church. It's just as true about playing a tambourine. Are you listening? Oh, <laughs> did I lose somebody? <laughs> you may be having a great time. <laughs> but the person this, whose ear is six inches from that tambourine yeah. is probably not edified. <laughs> huh? And the people that's trying to keep time on the platform, if your timing ain't so good, are not being edified. Dancing. Did I lose somebody? No. You know? It's amazing how some folks, the only place they want to do their thing is on the front row. <laughs> or in front of the platform. We've had people before, and they said, well, I want to dance in the middle of the service. We said, okay, out there by the back door. <laughs> I'm still in the auditorium, but, you know, at the back. No, 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 no. Got to dance in the front. Why? <laughs> Why? All things are lawful for me, Paul said by the Spirit, but not all things edify. Not all things build up. This, this should be a recurring thought in our lives. Everything we do Maybe what you know about that situation, that person, it may be true, it may be right, but how you approach it or when you approach it or the way you approach it. Remember, this started off with follow love and desire things of the Spirit. If you don't do it right, it won't edify them. 
If it doesn't edify them, you did it in the flesh. You didn't do it by the direction of the Spirit, and you'd have been better off not doing it. The Lord told me one time about dealing with folks and situations. He said, son, he said, because I made some mistakes. Uh, why are you looking at me like that? Have you, have you ever made any mistakes in this area? <laughs> said and did some things when and where in a way you shouldn't have. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, it's not what you see. It's not what you know. It's not what they need. It's what will they receive. And you don't know that. But the Holy Spirit does. He knows what they'll receive, when, where, and how. And, and if it's Him giving you utterance, if it's Him giving you direction, what will be the results? Come on, help me out. What will be the results? It'll build up. The end result will be a building up. Even, even if you got corrected, it'll build you up. Right? Right. <laughs> Even if you got spanked real good, for some reason you're happy about it. <laughs> because for one reason you know, thank God I get this fixed. I won't be having that anymore. Is that right? I can move on. I can actually get past this and get out of this. <laughs> Keep going. He said, verse 12, for as much as you are zealous of, of spiritual things, Seek what? When we come to church, it's not about people seeing how spiritual you are or what you know or what, what experiences you've had or me. What, if, if it's happening in this precious time, every time a service starts, you've got a very small amount of time to accomplish certain things. If you waste it on the wrong thing, people say, oh, Brother Keith, you know, just, just go as long as you want to. I'm going to hear some people say, well, I didn't say that. <laughs> but you can't. People get tired enough or people get distracted enough. It's futile to go on. And all the Bible is good, so what do you talk about? If we're led by the Spirit, come on, give me the result. If we're led by the Spirit, what'll happen? You'll be edified. If it's just the flesh, it wears you out. Hmm? <laughs> it's before you saw it. I think maybe you've been in the flesh sometime. <laughs> I'm not saying I hadn't. <laughs> but can you do better? Have you tried it? Have you done it? All of us just know in part. But we know this. If it's dead, if it's empty, if it's nothing, if it's fatiguing, mm -hmm. it's flesh. I said it's flesh. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. Whether it's in your personal life or in the service. But when it is the Holy Spirit, it's edifying. Amen. And when it's done in the congregation the right way, it's also edifying. Wherefore, he let him that speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. Now where is he talking about? In church. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I'll pray with the spirit. I'll pray with the understanding also. I'll sing with the spirit. I'll sing with the understanding also. Else, when you shall bless with the spirit, how shall he that occupies the room of the unlearned say amen at your giving of thanks, seeing he understands not what you say? For you verily give us thanks well, but what's the problem with it then? Other, other translations say, you, you give thanks nobly and excellently. He's talking about giving thanks now in other tongues. When's the last time you did that? No remarks. <laughs> Blessed with the Spirit. It is a supernatural means of praise of worship, not just prayer and intercession, not just asking, here's another purpose of tongues. To give thanks the way God ought to be thanked. 
People have said wrong things for years. Well, I guess none of us could really thank God the way we ought to. If you're getting faith, do it in tongues. Or prophecy. You actually can. He will give you the ability, the utterance. When your heart wells up and you think, God, you've just done so much. I don't know, I don't know how to thank you. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Slip on over into spirit utterance and begin to express to him by faith with all your heart. The Holy Spirit will give you the words. He'll give you the way to say it. He'll give you the way to express it. And the Father will understand it completely. Completely. And you will have thanked him like you ain't never thanked him before. You will have praised him the way he ought to be praised. Now is that worth anything or not? Come on, is that worth something? You don't think that's worth something. We do. For you verily give thanks well or excellently or nobly, but what's the problem? During church service, in the meeting, in the church, it's not the time to do it. It's not the place to do it. It's not the time and place to do a lot of stuff. Because what happens here should benefit everybody should build up everybody. This is not just for me. You know, a, a lot of people, bless their hearts, they're wanting to do things when they come to church because they don't do it at home. They want you to pray more in the service because they don't pray at home. They want you to praise and sing longer because they don't do it at home. And, and we do want you edified, but it's not just about you. Sometimes I can almost feel people as I'm speaking that, that you, you can hear them saying, I know this, I know this. Well, honey, you ain't the only one here. <laughs> we got people that got saved last week. Yes. Yes. And it ain't like you know it so perfectly and you've been doing it the best way either, right? I mean, Amen. come on. <laughs> Just take a quick look around and, and, and remind yourself, there are other people here. Yes. And God loves them. Is that right? Amen. Just as much as he loves me. Amen. And if they've never heard it before, mm -hmm. can I endure hearing Brother Keith say it yes. another time yes. for their sake? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'll try to make it as nice as I can. <laughs> he said, for you verily give thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Now this is a statement. Because these Corinthians were talking in tongues at the wrong place and the wrong time in the wrong way. And, 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 and instead of just correcting them, he said, hey, hey, I talk in tongues more than y'all do. More than any of you. I'm sure some of them were saying, I talk in tongues a lot. He goes, I know. But I talk in tongues more than you do. Yet what? In the church. Don't pull this out of context. People have done this. I've read stuff that theologians have written and you just shake your head and go, come on now. Are you not even trying to understand this? <laughs> In the church, I'd rather speak five words with my understanding. Why? Because he's not there to just edify himself. He's there to edify them. That by my voice I might teach others than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue, but that doesn't mean that since Paul has learned how to prophesy, which they say equals preach, that he no longer needs to speak in tongues. Obviously not. He speaks in tongues all the time. If he spoke in tongues more than that much, he must have got up speaking in tongues and went to bed speaking in tongues. Amen. And if Paul needed to speak in tongues, come on, help me out. If Paul Needed to speak in tongues all the time, a lot? Yes. What about you? What about me? He's the one that penned Romans. If he didn't know what to pray for as he ought and needed the Holy Spirit's help, are you and I out beyond that? No. No. Thank God. Help me out. Thank God. Th Say it out loud. Thank God. Thank God for speaking with other tongues. 
He said, verse 20, brethren, don't be children in understanding. And this is the problem. Ignorance and childishness in understanding spiritual things. In malice be children, in meanness. <laughs> but in understanding be men or be mature. In the law it's written, with other tongues and other lips I'll speak to this people. And yet for all that they won't hear me, said the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign. Now, again, you got to keep it in context. You, th this phrase will help you. Tongues without interpretation that the speaker understands. Like what happened in Acts 2. That's for a sign. And if you read that whole, te that whole text, it said they marveled. They wondered. That's what a sign does to you. Makes you wonder. Makes you marvel. Tongues are for a sign. Tongues without interpretation that other people understand. It's not, not to them that believe, to them that, that believe not. Prophesying, inspired utterance in an own tongue, not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Somebody say, which one's right? Both. You need both. You need to do both. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues, there come in those unlearned unbelievers, will they not say, you are mad? And that's exactly what was happening in the church at Corinth. You'd show up there and maybe for a solid hour or two you hear thousands of people speaking in tongues. <laughs> and just on and on. No interpretation, no understanding. But if I'll prophesy and there come in one that believes not or one unlearned, he's convinced of all, he's judged of all. These things are doorways to other gifts of the Spirit with revelation like word of knowledge and word of wisdom. And that's why he said secrets of their heart made manifest, falling down on their face, he'll worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you, say it out loud, every one of you. Amen. Now he just got through saying, I want all of you to speak in tongues. We just got through reading in Mark or in, earlier in the series, it's one of the signs that follows believers. Here he says, every one of you has a psalm, a doctrine, uh, uh, which means a, a teaching, a tongue, a revelation, an interpretation, all believers. He said, if you pray in tongues, pray that you may interpret. Can a believer speak in a psalm and a hymn and a spiritual song? Yes. Can a believer, I'm not talking about preachers, can a believer get a revelation? Yes. Can they share that revelation with somebody else? Yes. Who can do this? Me. Who? Every one of you. Now, do we believe the Bible or not? Yes. Every one of you mm -hmm. can speak in a song, mm -hmm. can get a revelation, something make, that they can share, teach with somebody else, a tongue, an interpretation. But what's the big thing? Well, if, you're, if we're following the Lord's leadings, we'll do it the right time, the right place, the right way. We know that just praying like a blue streak in other tongues with no interpretation, we do that at home. Right? We do that in our car. We do that, do that across our beds. We know that speaking in tongues in the congregation should be interpreted. Right? Different kinds of tongues. But let it all be done unto building up. If any man speak in a tongue, let it be by two or the most by three, and that by course, one at a time, and let one interpret. We're not going to have all these tongues with no interpretation, and then these competing interpretations. <laughs> they don't need, basically, it's going to be a tongue and an interpretation. But it could be another tongue, but he said, don't let it be any more than three. Before then, there's interpretation. Should we know more about this? Yes. And if there's no interpreter, you got something burning in you, do what? In the church, don't speak out. But what can you do? Speak to yourself. You can pray in tongues like a house of fire with your mouth shut. I do it all the time. especially if I'm out in the public and 
other things going on. I'm around unbelievers or Christians that don't understand. Sometimes something will come up in me. What do you do? You can, you can speak. You are a spirit being inside this body. You can speak within yourself. Hallelujah. I get stirred up just thinking about it because it, it builds you up. It builds you up when you do it. And you can do that off and on throughout the day. You wind up doing it for a substantial amount of time throughout the day. And the amazing thing is you can think while you do it. <laughs> now when you can, it's good at home and in private. It's good to go ahead and open your, open your mouth, lift your voice. You come up to a, a higher place. That's good. But you can also pray within yourself. Hallelujah. Let him speak what? To himself and to God. Let the prophets speak two or three. Now just because you prophesy, that does not make you a prophet. He said you may all prophesy one by one. He is not saying you may all be a prophet. Any more than all of you can be an apostle or evangelist. No. But if there are prophets there, let them speak two or three, and let the other judge. So any utterances that people say, thus saith the Lord, they need to be judged by the Word of God and by the witness in your own spirit. Just because somebody said, thus saith the Lord, does not automatically mean that it was. Thus saith the Lord. It needs to be judged. Keep going. If anything be revealed to another that sits by, let the first hold his peace. For you may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. Can you see the edifying results of learning and growing and being comforted? The edifying? What is, why people balk at this and go, I, I know I can't prophesy. You don't know any such of a thing. You can speak in tongues and you can prophesy. Prophecy is the same thing as speaking in tongues, except it's in a known language. And it's not predicting the future. It's not being a prophet. It is speaking unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. We've already gone over this. Revelation says the spirit of uh, Jesus, uh, testimony of Jesus, is the spirit of prophecy. All may learn. All may be comforted. Are we reading about a New Testament church? Yes. Are we reading about a spirit-filled church? Why should we have lost this? Why should this not be for us? Don't we have the same Holy Spirit? The spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. When people say, I have to do this. God made me say this and do this. That's wrong. That's wrong. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Somebody say, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. For time's sake, go down to verse uh, 38. If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. <laughs> he knew there'd be some people that'd shut this down and go, ah, oh, that ain't right. I don't believe all that. He said, well, if you want to be ignorant, just be ignorant. Why? Because he started out back in chapter 12 saying what? I don't want you to be ignorant. So he shared, he's told you all these things. And if you say, ah, no, that ain't right. I know better. Well, you just going to stay ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues, but let all things be done decently, properly, in order. How would you know if they were done that way by the direction of the Spirit? Everybody would be edified. Stand on your feet if you would.